Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options U.S. Market Update. The market continues to consolidate, but could that big Fed meeting tomorrow be the catalyst for a breakout? Interest rates have broken support. What does that mean? And Bitcoin gave us a false breakout. So where does it go from here? Let's take a look at the charts. At the time of this recording, it is 12.30 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesday night slash Wednesday morning, and currently the futures are about as flat as they could possibly be. Taking a look at the market, you can see that we've gotten awfully close to that 426 level that we've been talking about for quite a while. And if you haven't been watching recent videos, here's the zigzag pattern in that wave five, which is also part of a larger zigzag that gave us that 426 target. Now we've gotten awfully close. When yesterday's high, we hit 425.37. Today we hit 425.46. Heard me say that normally these fib levels actually get touched not just close as we are right now well interesting thing is they actually did get touched in the futures market last night in the futures market look at the high 426 so 426 is where we move back to the downside so does that count well usually we actually touch the line during the regular trading day as well so i still think that that 426 level could be hit now what happens after that? Well, if we are able to break above 426, we still have that 261.8% level extension level way up at 452. I think that might be a stretch, but we have to keep it in mind if we are able to break through this level. There's also something else that I wanted to share with you. Interesting pattern on the S&P. Take a look at this. Is this a pennant pattern or is it an LA wave diagonal pattern? You can label the subdivisions um, with five waves in the wave one, but then it comes a little trickier to try to create the subdivisions, especially in the wave two. So this may just be an old fashioned pin and pattern. Nonetheless, when you look at the volume, it's consolidating in this pattern, whether it's a diagonal or uh, just a pin and pattern, but on low volume. So something is getting ready to happen in the market. I don't think we're going to have to wait very long. As I mentioned in the intro, we have the big Fed meeting tomorrow and there's a lot of unease. Are they going to start talking about their bond tapering program? Are they going to give us any sort of a hint on when they're going to raise rates next year, 2023? That's why the market is really going uh, nowhere uh, over the past couple of months waiting for this uh, information from the Federal Reserve. That's probably going to jump both volume and volatility. We'll have to wait and see how that uh, plays out tomorrow. But this is one of the more anticipated Fed meetings in quite some time. So if we take a look at bond yields, you can see, I also mentioned this in the intro, they've broken support. So what does that mean? As we take a look at it, there's a couple schools of thought here. Bond people, if you've heard me say before, the bond market is smart. There's a lot of traders in the bond market. There's more money in the bond market and bond traders are viewed, whether you agree or not, to be smarter than equity traders. And there's a theory that once you get a spike in rates, followed by a back off, it can be signaling a recession down the road. Now that would be hard to imagine right now, right? When we've had the hot CPI numbers and we've had good GDP numbers coming up, but we've also talked about how the labor force is really tight. So if important people don't start coming back to work, then what's going to happen? How is the economy going to grow if we don't have people coming back to work? We don't stop paying people for staying home and not having to work. It's hard to imagine how the economy can continue to grow like this. Could that lead us into a recession? Uh, another interesting uh, food for thought there, if you will. And here's the 30 year. So that was the 10 year. And here's the 30 year showing us the uh, same thing coming up, uh, coming up actually to test that uh, break of support there at 22 on the 30 year. In the past several recordings, we've been talking about storm clouds on the horizon, issues that the market is going to have to deal with, signs that maybe we're heading for some sort of at least a decent correction. Well, I'm going to add another one in this recording. This is a pretty interesting chart. Now, it is from Robert Prechter, who's kind of known as a perma bear, so take that into account. But it's really interesting for someone like me that's a big believer in Fibonacci ratios and the summation series. And you can see basically the chart he's showing in the upper right hand corner starts at 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, etc. And takes the summation series all the way to the beginning of the market. Now if this is correct, it's calling for a market top here in 2021. 
Just another thing to think about when you're making your decisions about whether to go long, short, or neutral moving forward. So all these issues are exactly why we've been steering our alert subscribers towards strangles, not knowing which way the market's going to break out of that consolidation pattern. There's a link in the commentary section of the video where you can see a five minute uh, briefing that I gave on our strangle mastery course where we go in depth into the strangle strategy and the math, gamma, delta, theta, the things that we utilize to mathematically guarantee that if the market moves, we'll make money as fast as mathematically possible. We take a look at gold, GLD, you can see that uh, we've moved to the downside. Now we are in a five wave pattern to the upside on the main LA wave pattern. We did break this bit of support here at 175. We haven't labeled the wave four yet, but we may be on our way down towards labeling that four, but look where the projection is. Now the projection for the wave four is right there at 170, which is the next level of support right smack through the middle of that projection. So if this wave four does get labeled, that's a point where maybe gold could find a bottom. The dollar has really done nothing. We're now on the September uh, contract on the dollar. If you remember, we showed this zigzag pattern to the downside and just spot on as you could get, touched the 61.8% extension level on that C wave. And then we've just been kind of going sideways and consolidating uh, cents and we're at a little bit of resistance here so the dollar's not really giving us much of a signal which way it's going to go it may react to the fed meeting on wednesday as well so wednesday is a big day as you can tell now let's take a look at bitcoin remember we also had this zigzag pattern to the downside on bitcoin where Elliott wave just absolutely nailed this last move there you go, right to the 161.8% extension. There's a lot of people that were in the Trade Finder uh, webinar where it's talking about how if it broke 100%, it's going to go down to 161.8. Didn't necessarily know it was going to do it in one day, but it did, and we've been consolidating since then. And then we talked about, in the last recording, this triangle. Which way is Bitcoin going to break out? And so we had this really nicely formed symmetrical triangle, and Bitcoin broke to the downside, but it's come right back up. And now it looks like it wants to break higher. And at the time of this recording, Bitcoin is trading just around 39,000, uh, right underneath that 40,000 level. So it's not quite giving the follow through yet. There's no such thing as two head fakes or two false breakouts. In other words, nothing breaks out of a triangle, one direction, giving a false breakout, moving back to the other, and that one failing as well. What happens when you see that kind of a pattern is you're actually forming a larger triangle. This is more of the stuff that we talk about in that strangle mastery course. So here's the larger triangle that we could be forming, meaning Bitcoin may just be going sideways for a while. Where do you think the market is going to go? Leave us a comment. We certainly have a really nice pennant pattern, if nothing else, which leads to a breakout on this low volume. So I'm curious to know your opinion. Think we break higher or lower from here? Last but not least, as we always do, we look at the VIX and you can see here that we are right through here. I will send a note to our subscribers. We post commentary in addition to doing weekly uh, webinars just for our uh, alert subscribers only. And I mentioned this over the weekend that on Friday, this break here of the VIX down below the 16 level was going to be key because any break of major support resistance needs to follow through a confirmation day just like breaking a major moving average or breaking out of one of our triangles and it was going to be key whether we got a follow through or reverse back to the upside which is exactly what happened the VIX reversed back up got back above 16 not really a, a sign that the market wants to go um, much higher at this point in time. But we have the, uh, the Fed meeting again, and who knows what happens after Wednesday's trade. But got you set up to see. If you like this recording, please hit that like button, or better yet, hit the subscribe button. You'll be notified immediately when one of these recordings is posted. Thanks, we appreciate that. 
Tomorrow's going to be a really interesting day. Have a great week. We'll be back to talk to you about it in the next recording. Take care, everybody. If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.